that's why stories are important. But when you when you when you end up, I guess, taking too many benzos and start believing that those stories are literal and real, well, then you have a problem. What is this? Am I blocked by f this tall Bart guy? Nice yeah. rap. Why am I blocked by this guy? The f isn't this like a like a lefty shit poster? Ay -ay -ay. So weird. Like probably saw some random comment from like an actual unironic transphobic loser and they were like oh this guy must be transphobic and then block me like an idiot or right, whatever who cares um luckily we can still use uh you know the the incognito here i'll start off with this one are we rolling nice yeah. rat thanks man that's my nickname is the rat king oh yeah so that's kind of... Do you have a nickname? Do you know what a rat king is? Huh? Do you know what a rat king is? Uh-uh. Oh, my God. It's a terrible story. Is there it? is a rat king. Uh-uh. Well, this is the theory now. I don't know if people ever did this. So imagine your village is full of rats. Oh, yeah. Okay, so now you go catch 10 rats. He's like, oh, yeah, I can imagine. What? What is that response? He's like, oh, I can imagine a village full of rats. Always. I'm always imagining that, you know? He's from the trailer park. No, I know. I know. He's <laughs> he's from Louisiana. It checks out. Man, even the rats don't want to be in Louisiana. He's not, he's not talking about rat. <laughs> in Louisiana, they got something bigger, okay? What is it called? The f is that thing that the cops have to shoot down there? It's not even a, 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 a yeah, nutria. It sounds like a food. <laughs> Yeah, they're like, they're gigantic, dude. Rats. Okay. You throw them in a pit. Okay. Soon, there is one rat, because he gets all the other rats. He's a champ. Then you throw 10 more rats in there. Soon, there's one rat. You do that three or four times. Then you take the remaining rat, and you let him go. And soon, there are no rats in the village. Really? That's the theory. Wow. So he, <laughs> it was like the toughest of them all. Yeah, and then he learns to eat rats. Wow. Are we rolling? Nice yeah. rat. Pretty sure that's not a thing. Uh, I don't think that that's how that works because pest control would be dramatically different if that was the case. Uh, David C. Bell says, this is from Skyfall. Jordan Peterson is half remembering the villain monologue from the movie Skyfall and confidently retelling it as historical fact. And that pretty much sums up how he gets most of his information. Hello, James. Welcome. Do you like the island? My grandmother had an island. Nothing to boast of. We could walk around it in an hour. But still, it was, it was a paradise for us. One summer, we went for a visit and discovered the place had been infested with rats. They'd come on a fishing boat and gorged themselves on coconut. So how do you get rats off an island? My grandmother showed me. We buried an oil drum and hinged the lid. Then we wired coconut to the lid as bait, and the rats would come for the coconut, and boom, 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 boom. they would fall into the drum. And after a month, we've dropped all the rats. But what do you do then? Throw the drum into the ocean? Burn it? You just leave it. And they begin to get hungry. And one by one, they start eating each other until there are only two left, the two survivors. And then what? Do you kill them? No. You take them and release them into the trees. But now they don't eat coconut anymore. Now they only eat rat. You have changed their nature. That's not fair. The winner of rat bracket one is going to be tired when the next 10 rats get in there. Um, I love that Jordan Peterson's analysis always revolves around how like stories are real, which is kind of funny because like conservatives, especially with TikTok, unironically believe that like a big part of his analysis does and has always revolved around how like the the archetypical uh, the, the, the things that you write in stories from myth making all the way down to like like uh, religion and and the you know new stories that you see now are actually depictions of reality. Okay, it's actually literally things that have happened. 
I dreamed I saw my maternal grandmother sitting by the bank of a swimming pool that was also a river. In real life, she had been a victim of Alzheimer's disease and had regressed before her death to a semi-conscious state. In the dream as well, she had lost her capacity for self-control. Her genital region was exposed. Dimly, it had the appearance of a thick mat of hair. She was stroking herself absent-mindedly. What does this mean? We will never know. But I did write it in my book, Maps of Meaning. I did write this. And liberal neo-Marxist postmodernists want to stop me from reading this out in my audiobook, which I did. Look it up. It's not an AI. It's my actual voice. And no, I will not apologize. Her grandmother sitting by the bank of a swimming pool, which was also a river. Her genital region was exposed dimly. It had the appearance of a thick mat of hair. She was stroking herself absentmindedly. She walked over to me with a handful of pubic hair compacted into something resembling a large artist's paintbrush. She pushed this at my face. That's the best part. Grandma, stop pushing your bush at my face. I raised my arm several times to deflect her hand. Finally, unwilling to hurt her or interfere with her any further, I let her have her way. She stroked my face with the brush gently and said, like a child, isn't it soft? I looked at her ruined face and said, yes, grandma, soft. NB's a cop's worst nightmare. Okay, the music part is they, 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 they put that in there. That's always been his, that's always been his analysis. It's not new, technically. Now, of course, if you look at it and you, you investigate that and you realize that, like, it is obviously embellished, that's one thing where you're like, these are supposed to be stories we tell people to, to instill some level of social cohesion or have some social order, you know, organize community on these boundaries, uh, which is fine. That is like, there is truth to that, right? That's why stories are important. But when you, when you, when you end up, I guess, taking too many benzos and start believing that those stories are literal and real, well, then you have have a problem. Rat is this. The rats are all like this. The rat goes like this. So the rat's like this. The normal rat is like this. That's the normal rat. Like this. Like this. It sniffs. It's like this for quite a while. He's like this. And then maybe he sniffs. You are now a normal rat. You're ready, man. Most of you aren't foaming at the mouth. And, you know, like fundamentally, why? Why? You're doomed. Why are you not afraid? You're not supposed to look at the stories and go, well, th these stories are the real thing that happened, actually. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to go, what is this story pointing to? Or what is the purpose of uh, retelling this story? Okay? Not vice versa. You're not supposed to flip the damn thing and be like, uh, <laughs> what historical fact am I learning from this Rat King story? And should I explain it to others as though it's real? To be, to be fair, he said it's a theory, which it's not. It's just fiction. Yeah, I mean, you can try to mask it. <laughs> you can mask it and be like, this is what people are theorizing.